All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Hanson Athletics Radio. I'm excited to be putting this out for you guys today. We're going to talk about velocity-based training. I just did a series of videos on Instagram um, at Hanson Athletics, uh, breaking down a, a long form and some short form on velocity-based training and how we've been using it at the gym and with our youth athletes. So excited for today's episode. Um, we're going to have a video version as well on Spotify. So if you want to watch my ugly mug talk about it, go ahead and tune in. And quick plug for Hanson Athletics, if you're looking for on-site or online training for either active adults or athletes, we are a performance-based gym, and you're going to get an insight into that as we dive into some of the technology pieces we're using to track and work with our athletes uh, via velocity-based training. Obviously, remotely, that's a little bit harder because you don't have necessarily have the equipment or the technology pieces, but on-site, we have the technology needed to implement this and uh, have uh, enough of it available for all the athletes to get access to it. So first and foremost, I want to clarify, uh, when we, as we talk about velocity-based training, uh, for us at the gym, we primarily use this with our older, more developed athletes. So we're talking uh, pretty much juniors and seniors in high school, and potentially some uh, athletes that are a little bit ahead at, in their younger years at high school as well. But middle school kids, we just work on uh, building a base level of strength and we don't get too much into uh, the velocity of their movements or dive as deep into it. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear before we got into uh, what uh, velocity-based training is. So VBT, I'll just refer to it as VBT, so I don't have to say velocity-based training so much. Um, it's a type of training that uses an athlete's velocity of the barbell, um, for example, barbell, uh, this can be done uh, in multiple different movements and by attaching straps to different types of equipment or actually the body. So there's a lot of different ways to look at the velocity, but today we'll talk probably primarily about the barbell as uh, I want to get into some points that we found beneficial with youth athletes with the barbell. So again, we're measuring how fast they move or the barbell moves, and this helps guide our training. So um, this type of training has been shown to be effective. Um, and then more traditional methods, uh, AKA keep it simple, uh, lift slow, be slow, lift fast, be fast. So if you're looking for adaptations that are going to carry over more to the field or to sport, uh, versus just lifting as much weight as possible, that's where velocity based training can really help you deep dive as a coach or an athlete and make sure you're working in different zones within uh, velocity based training to improve your performance or where you're weakest on the field. So for example, now, basically, you have max strength. Everybody's familiar with max strength. That's lifting basically as heavy as you can. doesn't really matter how fast it is. Then you have speed, like sprinting, where uh, the movement is as fast as it's going to get, and there isn't any external load on that. But in between that um, is where power comes in, and there's two different kind of modes you can play, play with uh, in programming when you're trying to get into the power uh, area and developing power with athletes, and they call them speed strength and strength speed. So... Simply broken down, speed strength is an emphasis more on moving the bar fast. It will be obviously lighter loads. You'll still develop some strength, but the emphasis is speed. And then strength speed is you're still working on loads that in your head, think about if you lift 75 to 85%, um, probably a little bit less than that based on the athlete. It just depends on where you're at. But you're trying to move that bar um, as fast as possible, but it's going to be slower because the load's heavy. So you're getting a little bit more of a strength stimulus while working on speed. And by playing around in these two zones, programming them, and working through them in our different blocks, athletes are able to develop different qualities outside of just max strength. Everyone knows the athlete or has seen the athlete that's a weight room warrior, as we call it. So they're really good in the weight room. They're really strong, but they aren't necessarily the guys getting playing time or uh, having that, that strength actually carry over to the field. So that's like a brief overview of, of velocity-based training and how it can be applied to some barbells. Um, and again, we have found it to be more effective in increasing our athletes' speed, their vertical, and uh, actually still getting stronger. So a lot of our athletes are absolutely getting stronger and making progress with this method. Um, I want to dive into uh, what I've found uh, with the velocity-based training and what I like better than percentages because with these athletes, I think uh, necessarily getting a max uh, rep of something and then just trying to program percentages is not the best way to drive performance or the safest way. So What's really cool about the well, way we, we use velocity-based training is mostly to prescribe uh, work zones for the day. So it kind of ties back into fluid periodization, which is where an athlete can kind of maximize when they come in, when they feel good, when they feel bad, and the weights are going to adjust based on 
uh, recovery levels and uh, how the athlete is that day. There's a lot of different factors that come into that and it gets even more confusing with female athletes in their cycle. So this allows athletes to maximize what they have that day and also back off if they're under recovered or not feeling very well. Um, so instead of using percentages, we will program uh, or give the athletes a speed to hit with the bar in meters per second. So we'll say you need to be within this range. And that day they might they might PR on their three rep max or they might be a lot lower, but that feedback instantly from doing each rep, they'll be able to see the feedback uh, literally instantly as they do the rep and the coaches as well. And that allows us to make on-fly uh, modifications, lower the weight, raise the weight, and get that athlete to where they need to be to achieve the adaptation for that day. And again, and take into account all the other factors or how recovered the athlete is. So instead of just using percentages and load and just expecting the athlete to fit into that mold, we're actually going through yeah. and creating uh, the opportunity for the athlete to either overperform that day or still get work done uh, at a lower level based on where they're at. So um, that's one of the ways that we use it. And the, one of my favorite ways to talk about it is, is using it to help those athletes uh, get performance and drive that to their maximum intent. I jumped back in, had a brief interruption, so hopefully there's not too much jump around in the conversation, but I uh, wanted to dive back just and emphasize that um, this allows using this method, method with the velocity-based training and letting the athletes fluctuate uh, where they're at on the, that day and drive specific adaptations has been great for reducing risk of injury as well because we're not, like I said, boxing those athletes into a certain weight uh, that they have to hit, and uh, if they are under-recovered, technically overloading them and having a higher risk of injury so that's that's a huge benefit of it outside of just the performance uh perks of what of what's going on with the velocity based training and now if you're asking yourself well how can i get started in velocity based training so if you have no equipment you can always spend some time learning uh potentially find somewhere that has equipment that you can start to get an eye for what those different speeds look like and then emphasizing with athletes uh, to move fast, right? So moving fast will be the, the lowest hanging fruit, getting your athletes to move weights, choose weights so they can implement and drive quickly through and move the bar with speed. Uh, number two would be investing in some equipment. So we use Output Sports. Uh, there's a lot of different brands out there. If you just put in you know, velocity-based training, you'll see a lot of different options uh, in terms of technology. And you can kind of decide what's the best fit for you um, as an athlete. There's even some individual options that an athlete could buy on their own and implement it into their own training without having to get a whole system. So uh, again, output sports, we like output sports. There's a lot of different things we test with it uh, outside of just uh, bar velocity. So you can really get pretty deep and create uh, custom training programs and, and find out kids weaknesses and where they need to improve to reduce the risk of injury, but also drive their performance to the next level. So uh, lastly, when you do have these, these monitors, it's awesome and you're able to uh, track an athlete's progress a little bit more in depth uh, and, and a little bit more uh, insight driven into what you're gonna do with your athletes and where they need to improve and how you can A, ultimately get them to perform better on the field and faster on the field, which is huge. We truly believe speed is king. Uh, sports are played quickly now and the faster you are, uh, the slower the game feels and the more you're able to dial in and stay relaxed during the game versus trying to run full speed the entire time. You're going to make bad decisions, A, and you're going to fatigue quickly. So if we can drive athletes top speed up over over uh, what their competitors are at, typically they're able to play at a more relaxed, calm state, make better decisions, and perform better on the field. So if you guys have any further questions, send them over. Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Uh, you can always support us by following us on Hands Athletics, engaging with our content. Uh, check out our website. Uh, you can follow me personally on Twitter, Coach D. Hansen. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. If you guys have any interest in diving further in the topic, you can uh, send me a message and let me know. And if there's any uh, topics you'd like me to cover, go ahead and send them over. So have a great day, guys.